Afternoon. Afternoon, folks. I apologise for no show this morning, but as you know, I do a news review show, so putting it out after midday just isn't the worst it because you have the update on the coronavirus figures and uh, by that time you're on to the day's news um, after the morning programmes and uh, the midday lunch programmes. So there wasn't much point in putting one out. So I thought because I'm having to take my break very late in the day today, because I didn't get started till late on because of some problems at the depot. I thought I'd pop on and talk a little bit about a eh, the leaders debate debacle last night. Now, as you know, I don't watch live TV, so I didn't get to see it till half past ten when it was put out on YouTube. But eh, Jesus Christ, what a debacle that was! Let's talk about eh, the um, institutional bias that's there. All right. Now, in the political front, um, we had the leaders eh, and and the co-convener. The, uh, the Greens there. Oh, let's have a wee look at what I wrote about it. Um, because I did write the show, folks. There's, the show's all written. It's just there was no point. By the time I got out on the road, I didn't leave a depot at 20 past 11. By the time I got out on the road and go to my first wrap, it was after midday. The midday news is on. You've got the, the briefing zone. There's no point in me trying to interfere with that. All right. So... During a week, uh, let's have a look at the political breakdown of what the show was made up, right? We had Sturgeon, Dross, Sarwa, Rennie and Lorna Slater, right, for the Greens. So there you've got a 3-2 institutional bias there. Now, why wasn't Mr Salmond and his party uh, uh, invited along after the, the triumphalism and uh, the carry on the newspapers about my um, coming back into the scene? Well, the answer to that is quite simple. Um... He hasn't polled yet. None of his people are elected representatives and he doesn't have anybody in the parliament so he's no likely, he, he, he's got nothing really to say until he's in there, if he gets in there. Anyway, so there's the institutional bias that's there, it's 3 to 2. And then we look at the construction of the audience, right? The construction of the audience um, was a, you would have to say it was 80% um, unionist and about 20% um, a pro-independence. Now, that's done quite deliberately. The audience was also picked from people who had been on BBC um, shows before. Right? Anyway, so the, the debate gets underway and, you know, it's opened up with them giving a stake, uh, giving their, they're supposed to be giving their patch, uh, giving their bit to um, the... The public, what they're going to do in their life for the next parliament. Now, we had, you know, the Greens saying we want to advance the Green Agenda. We had Sarwa talking about health. Um, we had a, the, the, the First Minister talking about concentrating on the recovery for the pandemic. And you had Dross screaming, nay, second referendum. That's what Dross did last night, was scream, nay, second referendum. Um, as I watched it. Now, but... To be honest with you, um, Sarah Smith, who was the um, chair in the debate, was cutting uh, people off, uh, especially if they were getting to points that uh, might have been a wee bit hard for unionists to answer. But the the whole point of the debate, the, the whole thing all the way through it, was about recovery, right? Oh, by the way, we got a wee sip of coffee. I want to thank Trisha and uh, Andrew, Andy Galloway who I delivered to today for the cup of coffee. Hopefully they're watching, um, because they watch the show every day. I'd spoke to Trisha in the past about a problem she had with her son. Her son works in, a, in the aerospace industry. Um, so, anyway, they say, draw us all the way through. All she shouted was near referendum. But they were all talking about recovery, and they were all talking about how the recovery should be put first. The recovery of the economy should be put first. And the elephant in the room wasn't spoken about. And that annoys me. It wasn't even spoken about, hi Anne, it wasn't even spoken about by Nicola Sturgeon. And the elephant in the room is the cuckoos in the nest can talk about working together for recovery all they want. But they don't hold any power. And when you get right down to it, neither does Nicola Sturgeon. Because that's the whole point of the independence debate. The cuckoos in the nest 
have got nothing to offer the people of Scotland, and when you get right down to it, neither does the SNP at this point in time, because Westminster will decide the speed of the recovery, Westminster will decide what sort of recovery it's going to be, Westminster will decide how much money we'll have to spend on that recovery, and Westminster will tell us what and when and how much. So all this talk last night about coming together for the recovery of, put the arguments of independence to one side for the sake of, was pure, unadulterated push from the cuckoos in the nest. The cuckoos in the nest are branch offices, um, Labour, Lib Dems have no power and we've seen the contempt for the Scottish Tories from the Westminster Tories because Bojo couldn't even remember Murray Ross's name. You know, he didn't realise it was Dross, Douglas Ross. He called him Murray Ross. Well, but he, of course, they're claiming he got, he got his uh, first name and his constituency mixed up. He didn't. He? Bojo's got absolutely no idea who Dross is. None. <coughs> Bojo has absolutely no interest in the Scottish people or the Scottish economy's recovery. And all this talk about economic recovery. One of the questions last night was, what are you going to do to help the economy recover? Well, the answer from Nicola Sturgeon should have been nothing. When it got to her turn, she should have told the people of Scotland bluntly and honestly, nothing. Because there's nothing I can do. That power lies in Westminster. The dishonesty at even my own side is enough to make you seek. One of the other punters said that Scotland couldn't afford independence and it was only Slater of the Greens that put them straight and said, well, they've got money for nuclear weapons, so they must have money to pay nurses and to help the economy recover. But when you get right down to it, and the truth of it is, not a single party in Scotland will have any say in the recovery from the pandemic for our economy because we only hold one economic lever and that is income tax. Everything else is out with our control and it is time for our leaders to be made honest with the public about it. If I had been standing at that podium last night and one of the unions in the audience asked me what I was going to do for the economic recovery, I'd say nothing. You're all going to be poor. You're going to be bloody well skint. And when they asked me why, I'd have said, well, we don't have any economic levers other than income tax. And as you people are all skint because of the pandemic, we can't bloody raise income tax. The dishonesty, even on my own side, is starting to annoy me. The people of Scotland have to know the actual truth. We will have no say in our recovery. We will have no say in how much can be spent in that recovery. And we will have no say in which direction our economy is going in. But we already know with Brexit. Fishing doing 83%. Exports and food and drink doing 63%. Eh? Manufacturing and exports across the board doing 41%. Uh, these figures I haven't plucked out the air. These have come from the Office of National Statistics. What Westminster done is wreck the fucking economy. Pardon me. Easy, David. Your blood pressure and your language has wrecked the economy. And it was a deliberate act. They knew what they were doing. Bring Scotland to its knees. Tell it it's too wee, too poor and too stupid. You can continue to steal its resources. Simple as that. But the dishonesty of the leaders in that debate last night made me want to puke. And I had to sit bloody well through it. Because of you no idea of you the news show. So I had to sit there and watch one cuckoo in the nest lie through its teeth after another. And I had to watch the dishonesty of the Greens and our First Minister instead of telling um, the people straight. Don't give me an Alex Salmon would have done the same and all. He just stood there and lied through his teeth. Yeah, they want the people to have the, the impression that, it, that Holyrood is driving this bus. Holyrood's no driving the bus. Holyrood is the child of Westminster. And all the power lies in Westminster. You know. 
So, you know, when, I mean, last night's debacle was exactly what I've just said it was. It was a debacle. It was a waste of my energy, your energy, the politicians that were there on that stage's energy. Lying is all that was achieved last night. For the cuckoos in the nest, to the pro-independence parties, not one of them were honest with the public because not one of them have got any say in the direction that the Scotland will go in post-pandemic or at any other time. Never mind the internal market bill or anything else. The limited powers that that parliament have along there, the people don't understand the limited powers that that parliament has along there under the 1998 Scotland Act. If you have a look at what's along there, it's only got four or five competencies. Health, education, infrastructure, environment. That's it. The rest of it sits at Westminster. You know, that's it. You get, don't get me wrong, they're big briefs. There are many, many parts to the briefs. Health, education, um, a environment and infrastructure. But basically that's all there is. The limited powers of devolution has stunted this nation. But even with the limited powers of devolution, the, uh, in the last 14 years, the SNP have used that limited power well. We've spoke about it in the past. Mitigating the bedroom tax, um, you know, free higher education, free medicine at the point of need, um, new uh, expanded free travel, um, you know, nay bridge tolls, um, better a civic contract between the government and the people, but it's all being done with one horn tied behind the back. And it's time that our politicians, whether it be cuckoos in the nest or the people on our side, whether it be the Greens or the SNP, were 100% honest with the people. You know, it's no just Westminster and the unions that take advantage of the fact that most people don't know how little devolution gave to the, the people of Scotland. Even where insides doing it. Making promises to improve the economy when you've got no bloody say or the money, you've got no power, you've got no levers, you don't have the ability to go to your central bank and get it to borrow or to print money. You know, so when the cuckoos in the nest last night were saying they were going to do this to improve the economy, going to do that to help the economy, they're lying. Lying through their bloody teeth. Because Where's the money coming from? It's the treasury that holds the purse strings and if you think England's going to us anything to get out of this bloody pandemic, you're wrong. They will take, 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 take and as they have been doing forever, they will give us back with pocket money to run the four competencies that the parliament along that bloody well road has. Simple as that. They've even, look, yeah, I mean, they even go to, they even used to be able to legislate in devolved areas, but they can't even do that now because if they legislate in devolved areas, um, Westminster's going to challenge it in the bloody courts and claim that it uh, stunts Westminster's ability to legislate on our behalf, like Alistair Jack's going to do with the UNCRC. Right. And for those of you who are not quite aware of what that is, the, UN, the United Nations Charter on the Rights of the Children. All right, Alistair Jack's taking us to court to make sure that that, day, that gets struck down because even though the rights of the children are devolved, it's part of the devolved uh, competencies, um, health, education, social care, um, it would infringe on Westminster's ability to less, uh, uh, legislate, not just for us, but for the rest of the UK. Because when they write legislation for our UK, they would need to include the rights of the children in when dealing with Scotland. You know, so last night, folks, the leaders' debate was a waste of an hour of my life. It was a tobacco. With the cuckoos in the nest lying through their bloody teeth and the Greens and the SNP no behaving any better. They should be making it clear. And by the way, this should be on the syllabus in school. This should be on, um, the, and the, uh, this should be taught in schools, the limitations of devolution and what we can and can't do. Remember, power devolved is power retained. And the Tories are putting the boot in to make sure we all bloody well know it now. But what we're going to do for the economic recovery after the pandemic, the answer should have been nothing. 
We can't do nothing because we don't know what Westminster's given us. Simple as that. We don't have the powers or the economic levers to do it ourselves, so we're going to have to take the bag and bowl out and go cap in hand to Westminster and hope Bojo and his thieving crooks and carpet baggers down that road are feeling bloody generous. So everything you heard last night was pish and wind. And I'm fed up with pish and wind. I want honesty for the politicians and I want the limitations of devolution taught to the people of Scotland. Now Nicola's done well through the pandemic with one horn her tide of Somebody also asked what we're going to do about our share of the debt for the pandemic. Well, you know, we'll, we'll take on the share of whatever it was they gave straight to our parliament. The rest of it's their bloody debt. So what they give our parliament? 14.8 billion or something like that. Chump change. As for the furlough scheme, that's already the commuter taxation. Chump change. Ah, we gave them 64 billion in direct taxations, 200 billion in indirect taxations, and our, uh, our economy is worth 200 billion in indirect ta taxation, and the telling us we're too, pe too wee, too poor, and too stupid. You know what? Unions might have come down the, ba uh, down the uh, Clyde in a banana boat, but the bloody rest of you is didn't But the dishonesty for the Greens, the SNP, Labour, Tory, and Lib Dems last night. I wanted to throw up all our flair. Huh? What are you going to do to recover the economy? Do these people not understand the economy is no bloody devolved? There is no Scottish economy. It's a UK economy. And we are allocated 8.4% of it, even though we are 25% of it. Excluding oil and gas. These figures are no bloody well hard to find. God, the Martin Tyler Kemp's getting printed all over bloody place. I'm fed up with the dishonesty, folks. It's a bit like this fight now, right? Alba 1 and SNP 1, Alba 2, SNP 1, Green 2. I'm fed up with the fight now, right? You know, I long for the days when there used to be a secret ballot and nobody tell anybody how they were going to bloody vote. Aye, crumbs for the master's table, that's right. But nothing more than, yeah, it's a bit like my dog sitting at my feet when I'm having my dinner. That's what Scotland does. <coughs> Sitting at the feet of the master while he has his dinner, hoping the crumb drops to his. Even though we're the one that's putting the bloody food on the table for him. <coughs> Where are we? Um, ten minutes left in my break. I say thanks very much, Trisha and Andy, for the coffee. Next time I'm dropping by, I'll drop the mug back into you. Um, so, I don't want to keep my blood pressure up, folks, but I don't know what you used me to that last night. But when you get to it, when you get to it, yeah, the base it was all about coming together for recovery. A recovery that we will have no say in, financially, economically, or any way. And that's the whole point of wanting independence. It's to take the decision making out their hands, it's to put the powers to adjust and to build your economy out their hands and into your hands. It's to take the power to print and borrow money out of their hands into your hands. And it's the ability to rebuild from scratch, including that parliament along there. And I mean it. And we need to, when we do rebuild and we write a constitution, we have to make it illegal for politicians to tell bloody lies. Because what we seen last night was five, politi five politicians, so-called political leaders, lying through their bloody teeth. And I mean five. Because not bloody one of them will have a say in our economic recovery from the pandemic or the Brexit unless we're independent. Because if we're no independent, then all the policies will be set in Westminster. You can kiss your devolved parliament's ass goodbye. Because they don't want devolution anyway. They want Scotland to shut up, get back in its box. And shutting Hollywood would be a good way to do it. So that's what I've got for you today, folks. Um, I'll be, I'm hopefully be back tomorrow with my usual review show. Um, I don't reject a call for the dragon. 
Um, hopefully I'll be back tomorrow for my usual review show. Um, so, as I say, and Wednesday's section of a, this week's review will make it into the review of the week on Friday. Because, as I say, I did write it. It just... When I wasn't leaving the depot at 20 past 11, I didn't see any point. By the time I got somewhere, did my first couple of draps and pulled it out. The Yesterday's news is history already. Uh, chip paper. Come with 12 o'clock shot, you know. So, anyway, folks. It's about time for me to move on, so we'll do the usual stuff. Support uh, Broadcast in Scotland. Support Ind Independence Live. Support Indie Live Radio. Support Caledon Media. Norrie does a cracking wee show. Um... Support iScott Magazine, support the National Newspaper, support independence um, vloggers and bloggers, all right? Um, if they've got a donate button or if they've got a fundraiser gone and you've got a couple of shekels you can throw in the pot, please do. Don't throw any money at me because I don't want your money. I don't need money. What I need is people to wake the bloody hell up, understand how our politics work, understand the limitations of devolution, understand when you're being bloody lied to by the cuckoos in the nest or even we're inside. And I want uh, modern studies in Scotland to educate people on the limits of devolution. All right, let's move on to the health messages. Facts, face coverings and enclosed public spaces. Avoid large gatherings. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. Two metres social distancing when you're out and about. If you see me, like uh, Andy and Trisha have, say hello. I don't really bark. <laughs> I'm actually not a bad guy. And if you need a test, take one, all right? Um, get one. And you just look after yourselves. Now, I hope you enjoyed my wee rant on the tobacco that was the leader debate last night and eh, I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a nice day.